Hi, hello, my name is Beth and this is Red Art, a show where I pick someone out of pop culture who I think is larger than life, tell you why I think they're larger than life. And then I draw them and I try a different technique just about every single time. Guys, this week went I'm gonna be honest with you. I had great intentions. I was like, we're all going back to school this week. Not me, but you are, you know. All of the different YouTubers are doing back to school videos. And so I was like, what can I do that's back to school-y? And I came up with a pretty good idea, right? A flip book. I went and grabbed the closest thing I have to a textbook and it's this guy. Talent is not enough. Secrets for designers. A my flip book. And that's fine, that's dandy, that's great. And the person that I made the flip book of it's comic superstar Stan Lee. This is what it ended up looking like, which I hope looks good. It probably looks better than I feel like it does. I don't think it's very, I don't think. Stan Lee, the co-founder of Marvel Comics and the best salesman the comics industry has ever seen. Writer, film executive, producer, and publisher, this 94-year-old man is still kicking it in the industry and doing it in style. Born Stanley Martin Lieber in 1922 New York City, Stan's formative years happened during the Great Depression. He recalls having a fairly normal childhood, even though they had no money, no car, no telephone. At 10, his folks scraped up enough to buy him a bike, and that bike meant freedom. It was not only a vehicle for transportation, but also one for imagination and fed his love for adventure as a child. As Stan grew older, he was constantly picking up odd jobs, from writing obituaries to sandwich delivery, he even ushered on Broadway. At 16, he graduated high school early and promptly found a job as an office assistant at Timely Comics, the studio that would later evolve into Marvel. He truly started from the bottom. He filled artists' ink pots and erased leftover pencil marks on finished comic pages. He would write text filler for Captain America comics and use different pseudonyms for his credits, such as S.T. Alley, Stan Martin, and Neil Nats, but it was pen name Stan Lee that stuck. He intended to use his real name for more literary work, but Stan Lee became so well known that Stan ended up making it his legal name years later. At 18, he started writing actual comics with the company and was promoted to interim editor, over the years putting on more and more hats in the company. After a decade, though, he became rather jaded and wanted to quit the comics industry altogether. Now, Stan perhaps wouldn't be the man he is today if it wasn't for his wife of almost 70 years, Joan Lee, who sadly passed away earlier this year. When they met in 1947, Joan was already married and Stan was being set up with her friend, but sparks flew between the two of them and one divorce and six weeks later, the two were hitched. Six weeks. Joan was the one to push Stan to write the Fantastic Four, encouraging him away from the prototypical flawless hero and towards the more human and flawed figure. The shift in how he thought about superheroes reinvigorated his interest in the medium and in the late 1950s, the Marvel Revolution happened. Between the three writers and artists, Stan Lee, Mike Ditko, and Jack Kirby, the foundation of what we now see as the Goliath Company Marvel was built. Spider-Man, the Fantastic Four, the X-Men, the Avengers, Iron Man, the Hulk, Thor, Daredevil, Doctor Strange, these three men grew the comic genre by creating complex and fleshed out characters who lived in a shared universe. Now it's not fair to give credit to Stan alone for the creation of these characters. After they left Marvel, Ditko and Kirby both swore Stan was taking credit for work both of them had done. And even in the words that Stan uses to describe his modern working relationships, there's evidence of an attitude that supports this kind of a dynamic. At Stan Lee's Kamikaze in 2016, while speaking about his creative partner, Terry Douglas, Lee said, quote, he's great to work with. He does all the work. I take the credit. You couldn't have a better arrangement. And perhaps that's how Stan has built his career. He's a charmer, and honestly, there's value in that. You can't deny that Stan's ability to turn himself into the face of the Marvel Revolution is remarkable, and perhaps he should be remembered for that entrepreneurial knack, and not for creating the characters we all know and love. Artist Colleen Doran, who drew Lee's memoir, says, I don't know of anyone who knows Stan and doesn't love him, even if they hate the things that he's done. Now that being said, Stan Lee now runs his own company, POW Entertainment, and was inducted into both the comic book industry's Will Eisner Award Hall of Fame and the Jack Kirby Hall of Fame. He was given a National Medal of Arts in 2009 and has his own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, a dream come true for the New York kid. He set up the Stan Lee Foundation to help promote literacy, education, and the arts, and you can see him cameo in just about all your favorite Marvel movies to this day. Stan Lee himself is a larger-than-life persona who's immortalized in the comics that he's created through the years. Like this video if you liked it, subscribe to Snarled if you haven't already. If you like me, I have a channel, both on YouTube and on Twitch. Beth B. Rad is the name of that, you guys know. Check out all them cool links in the description down below and leave me a comment with who you want me to draw for the next Red Art. 
You're not coming next time. She's so scared. There's, there's a cat down there and she's so scared of the cat. <laughs>